for Joe sent it, remember? And I, as it is, sometimes it's good because last time when I was listening, I made a mistake. I got confused between Ashwatthama and Drishta Dumya. Okay. Yeah, so I think you probably know the difference. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Drishta Dumya was Drupad's son. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Ashwatthama was Dro Dro Dronacharya yeah, Dronacharya Dronacharya and uh, I, I kept calling me Jahamuja Drishtadum Bolatana Mahamani Ashwatthama Boldia. Oh. Since it's recorded, I don't want it to be wrong. Right. But uh, Drupad was uh, fighting with uh, on Arjun's side and his son Drishtadumya was like a commander. Arjun ke niche tha. He was like main, one of the main commanders, yeah. And Ashwatthama was uh, uh, on, on the, the bad side. side, yeah, yeah he was and he was. Up no, ko pata hoga Mahabharat ki kahani na. So he was more a friend of Duryodhan. Right. I didn't start. Go ahead and start it. Yeah, go, go ahead and okay. start. Yeah. So uh, he he just you know how in friendship you favor somebody whether they are right or wrong just because they are your friends. That was Ashwatthama's stand. Oh, Duryodhan is my friend, I'll do anything for him, kind of thing. And then he would do such horrible things. Towards the end, he did a lot more horrible things, where he killed the oh, Draupadi's oh, son, son, son yeah. Yeah. while they were sleeping. sleeping. Yeah, yeah. So, just wanted to make that clear that I did make that mistake, so just correct that one. Okay, so we will go to Gita Dhyanam. And Gita Dhyanam, we were on verse 5, correct? So this one you don't have this, remember? Oh, if you, she printed. Oh, very good, excellent. So fifth one, fifth one. When other people are not here, huh? Okay. So let's chant. Vasudeva Sutam Devam. Do we do? Oh, sorry. Because sorry. other people. No, 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 no. Yeah. That's fine. Number five. So let's let's try lead follow. Okay. Yeah. Vasudeva Sutam Devam. Vasudeva Sutam Devam. Kamsa Chanura Mardanam. Kamsa Chanura Mardanam. Devaki Paramanandam. Devaki Paramanandam. Krishnam Vande Jagat Guru. Krishnam Vande Jagat Guru. So, ye sabhi logo ne suna hoga na ye wala. Yeah, it's quite popular. Vasudeva Sutam is the son of Vasudeva. Devam is God. Kans Charnur Amardanam, the destroyer of Kans and Charnur. Devaki Param Anandam, the supreme bliss of Devaki. That is mother of Krishna Bhagwan. Krishna is Krishna. One day I salute or I bow down or I do pranams. Jagat Gurum, the world teacher. Okay. And Pon Padega. I salute Lord Krishna, the teacher of the universe, the divine son of Vasudeva, the destroyer of Kamsa and Chanura, the, the supreme joy of Devaki. So everybody knows who the characters are here, right? Vasudev was Krishna Bhagwan's uh, father. Kans was his mama, and Chanur was one of his. Uh, there were two people he sent first. Kans ko jab, uh, jab when Krishna Bhagwan was visiting, so Kans wanted to, you know, kill Krishna Bhagwan. So he sent his two pehlwans. That's what it is. And Devaki was, you know, his mother. Continuing our salutations to the teacher of Gita, Lord Krishna, we have, uh, Lord Krishna, we have this stanza, which, as we said earlier, can be read as a direct glorification of the divinity manifested as Krishna, or with its suggestiveness, it can raise an aspiring soul to adore the eternal life spark that is the one substratum for everything, everywhere. So here is it's just saying that if you... Page number on that. Oh, this is 14. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Is it? So, yeah. 
बिकॉज या डिस्क्रिप्शन ये बुक्स में है सो यू हु डजेंट है बुक कैन जस्ट लिसन सो हियर इज जस्ट सेम कैन बी क्लोज दैट वन दैट यू कैन हैव वन इज अ जस्ट सिंपल मीनिंग And the manifested one is the unmanifested form. I mean, that is the one subscribing. Right? Yeah, basically, what I'm saying is that either he's going to explain that how this verse can be either just a simple word meaning what it is, or you can go to the adhyatmic meaning. And for our purpose, since we are studying such a you know great scripture, we have to take the adhyatmic. You can take both. Both are very both, good, yeah. but more relevant is the adhyatmic one. That's what he's saying. considering this stanza as a simple glorification of the lord of vrindavan it has a direct meaning which reminds us or of his parentage of his adventurous and heroic service to the citizens of mathura in redeeming them from the tyranny of his uncle kamsa and and of his status as a teacher of the world because when he said jagat guru that's what it means and one of the reasons they call him the jagat guru because we already studied earlier that this bhagavad gita applies to everybody in the whole world and it is all the time it, it is not time bound ki but it is relevant that time it's not relevant now is relevant all times to everybody that's why he become jagat guru because he said it and then um, we all know the story so i won't get into it that you know when he was a teenager he was summoned by uh, kans because kans knew that the eighth child of uh, devki is and he suspected that that was him finally he kind of figured out and he wanted to you know get rid of him so that's all the stories which this kind of this two verses are telling you hmm. reconsidering the same stanza one certainly feels the impro impropriety of introducing a jagat guru as the son of his father vasudeva or as the apple of the eye of his own mother devaki or even as the murderer of his own uncle kamsa none of these qualifications adds any glow to his being a teacher of the world but by recognizing krishna as nothing but the self in us the entire stanza starts breathing with a new thrill and pulse waits with a new life as it were so then now you say yeah <laughs> that if you just say that okay he did all these heroic things but how did he become the jagat guru yes. because he is our own atma you know he is that brahman <coughs> who took a form of krishna and that's why so now he's going to even in each word there is like vasudev so, maybe sub yeah so what you change yeah. yeah. vasus 8 in number are in the vedic literature deities representing the seasons the seasons march and in their parade run out a year therefore these eight deities in themselves rule the concept of time the term deva in samskruta indicates that which illumines vasudeva therefore means the illuminator of the concept of time so we have divided that vasu and deva एंड वासु का नीचे दिया हुआ है ना कि आठ जो वासु हैं इफ एनी बडी इज इंटरेस्टेड यू कैन गो इन सो मच डिटेल दैट्स वन थिंग अबाउट आर स्क्रिप्चर्स दैट वी थिंक दैट दे डिस्कवर्ड एवरीथिंग नाउ इन लास्ट फाइव हंड्रेड ईयर्स एंड ऑल व्हेन यू गो एंड सी दे डोंट इवन कॉल फोर सीजन दे हैव एट सीजन सो दे इवन डिवाइड दैट फर्दर सो द क्लासिफिकेशन आर लॉट मोर डिटेल देन साइंटिफिक you know and they are there but people just it go don't look at it and just keep anyway that's more depth so who wants to look at the more depth one but then some people outright completely deny that's denial that's what it is that's that's they're yeah. staying in denial but everything is there yeah, yeah. okay means the illuminator time is conceived by the mind as the interval between two different experiences which it had lived through each experience is a perceptible mental disturbance manovriti and the illuminator of these vrittis is the one that lights up the concept of time evidently therefore it is the awareness in us that bathes our experiences in the light of its consciousness that is the illuminating factor in our mental life 
the self in us, the pure consciousness. The term Deva is again added, meaning the illuminator, the principle of light. So here in this verse, as you can see, it says Vasudevam, Vasudeva Sutam, and then again Deva. Yeah. So then he's going word by word. So Vasudev unke pita ka naam tha, but also, uh, sorry, Vasudev unke pita ka naam tha, Vasudev unka naam hai. You know that Krishna Bhagavan is also called Vasudev, Vasudev. right? So the, and, and so he's, they're explaining that Vasu is eight in numbers and all that, and then it's proving that because it is the deities representing the season, and season meaning change. And that is the concept of time then. And he's a deva of that, that illumines time. And then remember we had discussed that, uh, how that Brahman is before time. Time came after Brahman. Yeah. And that's why the, the, it's called second. In English yeah, language. Yeah, it's called second. One without the second. One without, one without the second, second is Brahman, but yeah, the, yeah. the word second, second has come. Came after. Because it's the after Bhagwan, after God. That's why the smallest unit in even English language. So there's Vedanta in English language too. Some philosopher have got the same, you know. So he's the illuminator. So that's why now everybody has understood Vasudev Kasyayanam. And now he's saying, Ki what is actually time? Because jab hum log, firstly, time is a very relative concept. Because does everybody agree? If you go to another planet, time changes. And then time when you are in... Hmm? Time is yeah, man-made. Yeah, it is our own mind. Yes. So, so it, it, scientifically it is described as a, uh, when two experiences happen, the interval between them. The so it, it is connected with change also. Yeah, it, it's the Nietzsche the other the modern uh, scientific terminology, time and space is defined. Let's read that. Okay. In modern scientific terminology, time and space are defined as separation of events into its the concept of time. The extension okay. The extension of an object into its the concept of space made of lens, and the gross structure of the matter into its concept of mass. So he's okay. saying separation of events into the concept of mind. You know, I'm here and now I'm going outside that door. So there are two things happening in kind of interval. And then there is a saying also, when you are happy, the time goes so fast. And when you're miserable, it's it's right. so, so see how it is related to mind, yes. you know? So we, we may think that we are going by clock, but there's another, in philosophy, there's another concept of time. And you, as you said, that this is man-made, yeah. you know? One rotation of the you know sun is one year and one rotation well, of the earth. Yeah, we think of and that. With the, we they have just divided. Exactly. They have divided. Yeah, yeah. That's it. And then space and time is always connected. That's yes. why they say time and space, time and space always. So to to go, we don't want to go too much in detail. So everybody kind of got the idea. And then he's also saying the second time the reason he used devam, because um, in Vedant all of our indriyas. Uh, the one that illumines the indriya called devas. So, so for example, the best example I can give is of seeing. Eyes, yeah. That that we have all the equipment we can see, but without light we cannot see. Does everybody agree? In a complete darkness, we so light becomes a deva for the eyes. So that's why light god, boldo, you know, or we cannot taste without water. Scientifically. Saiva is there. Yeah, you need the water. So water becomes a deva for that indriya tasting. So like that. So without the and and then in chapter fifteen it will come or other chapters also in Bhagavad Gita that how all these powers are coming from Brahman only. So ultimately it's it's traced back to Brahman. That's why it's called Deva. He's the illuminator of everything. Because we think that my vision is 2020 and there is no work in 2020. You cannot touch without air. Exactly. You right. cannot touch without matter. Okay. Yeah, or ga- so for all these five yeah. elements. So if you, when you go deep in Vidhan, they will tell you everything. It's extremely scientific, everything. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I think okay. everybody understood that. So then... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The self is the only power that can destroy the tyrant Kamsa and his henchmen like Chanur, Chanur, who have uh, uh, spurred the kingdom of Mathura. 
sweetness and imprisoned its real king, uh, Agrasen. Ugrasen. Ugrasen. The names given to the personalities in the stanza, the very name, okay, the names given to the personalities in the stanza, the very name of the kingdom. Mathura, apart from the story of the cruel spur and his tyranny, all remind us of the plight of man when the ego center aspers the inner kingdom of heaven. The self in us identifying itself with the matter envelopment creates the tyrant ego and it with its criminal host of deputies such as desire anger greed and passion starts its ruthless persecution in our bosom when the ego is ended along with its delusory attachments to its sheets the kingdom is redeemed Lord Krishna alone can throw the Kamsa from his throne into the dust and usher in an era era, era of joy and progress to the land of Mathura. The whole Vedanta is in this. It's, yeah. Complete. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so much. So he, he's saying that how, firstly, Mathura is like sweetness. That's the yes. meaning of it in Sanskrit. So, uske asli raja the Ugrasen. Ugrasen was actually Kant's father, right? Mm -hmm. If yes. you know the story. Uh, so, the way the, this whole symbolism he's saying that Ugrasen hai asli uske haktar, lekin unko to jail mein dal diya, right? Or khud, because of, and, and what he had, Kant's represent desire, anger, greed, and passion. So, so ruthless persecution. But the hamare hirde mein kya hota hai, some negativities jab aati hai na, so then the ego becomes strong yes. and it imprisons our, our true nature. Yeah. It's gone somewhere in, you know, <laughs> jail mein bitha diya usko. I don't want to listen to it. There's no, we have an inner voice. Yes. That, that is our conscious voice, our consciousness. It's always there, but we don't want to listen to it. it we shut it down. Hum kuch galat kaam karte hain, andar se hota hai humko. Ki hum kar rahe, but our desires take over, you know. So that's what the symbolism is saying that jail me bitha diya, but then when the delusory uh, attachment to his seat, the kingdom is redeemed. So Abhi Krishna has come and redeemed it back. So that's what we need to do symbolically that jitne bhi hamari negative cheeze hai, wo sab hum usko destroy karne ke liye, we have to hold on to the higher self. And that's what is, is going to come in Bhagavad Gita also. We have both. And even this fight they are talking about of Kaurav and Pandav is the fights of, of internal fight of good and bad. That we all of us have it. Saints, ho chai, with Vio, you cannot say that saints don't have it. They also have it. They have just controlled it. So that's the whole journey. That, you know, good and bad are both in us. And that's the symbolism here. So any, any questions about it? Any confusion or question? Or we can go ahead. So, okay, in the, there's still paragraphs. Go ahead, read it. Or, oh, there is. Or, yeah, or, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. How did I? Okay. Mm -hmm. In the Sakyam philosophy, the terms oh, Prakriti yeah. and Purusha are used to indicate the world of matter and that of the spirit. Matter is inert and totally insentient. The layers of matter in us, the body, the mind, and intellect, have no life of their own in them to react with the world outside and to eke out their joy from the world. All the joy that we know of the uh, of are gained from these layers, and we all know that we can do so only so as long as life, the consciousness, presides over them. Naturally, we physical men adore life more than anything else in the world because without life, we are not capable of having any experience of joy. So here is the other paragraph, uh, I mean, other line, Devaki Parmanandam, he's explaining. So why don't we finish that second paragraph also and then... Yeah, Devaki Kamini Usme. The world of matter, Prakriti, is represented here by the term Devaki, who was the womb that gave birth to the manifestation of the Lord as Krishna. If the infinite is not conditioned by matter, 
it will not be able to express its glory so vividly as we see it today in the pluralistic universe. A violinist cannot express the music in his bosom without a violin. A dynamo can reveal the energy that, is, that it contains only when harnessed. The flowing waters alone can manifest the electricity potential of the river. Indeed, Krishna the Self should be the source of all joys and fulfillment to Devaki, the mother, the world of matter, Prakriti. I'm going to do the last yeah, one. Yeah, last one. In short, Krishna is the vital life principle in contact with which the insentient mineral compounds bearing the shape and name of the body, mind, intellect gain for themselves the scintillating look of intelligence and sentience. Indeed, the self is the source of all the pleasures that matter seems to gather unto itself from its contact with the world. Okay, so Devaki Parmananda. Krishna one day Jagat Guru to be understood ki bow yes. down to Krishna who is the Jagat Guru and we discuss why he is the Jagat Guru. So the Devaki Parmanandam he has explained in detail. So in uh, Sankhya philosophy, you have heard of Prakriti and Purush, that's matter and spirit, they call it. So now he's saying the relationship between matter and, and spirit. So spirit by itself cannot do anything. And the best example is electricity and its equipments. Yes. Mm -hmm. That equipments are nothing without it and electricity by itself cannot express anything. So, so you need the combination, then we get so much joy. Electricity, I don't know what happens today, the computer. The only time we know the you know, kind of value of electricity when it's not there. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. When the electricity went away, so I said, oh, I, let me do this. Oh, I cannot uh, turn my stove. Oh, I cannot do this. I cannot open the garage door. Oh, my God. I was like slave to the electricity. So um, same is the relationship between them. So equipment, if it's so powerful, if there's no electricity, it can't do anything. So our body, mind, and intellect without the Atma cannot do anything. So that's what it's saying. The Devi ka, Devi ki Parman, jab dono ka milan hota hai, and then you know that Shivaratri ka bhi yehi symbolism hai. Mm -hmm. Marriage that's between, right. uh, you know, Shiv and Parvati, Shivaratri. You know that? Just to remove the ignorance, Shiv that's Ratri. a Ratri. Huh? Shivaratri. No, I mean, Shivaratri ka jo main, uh -huh. I know what you're saying, Ratri is night because, night you know, is a, is mm -hmm. midnight. Yes. But the, the yeah, symbolism is, the uh, concept is that pa Parvati or uh, Shiv Kamilan hua to ye dunya bani. I see. You know, the whole universe is a combination of Shiv and Parvati, matter and spirit. Yeah, that's, that's matter and spirit. That, uh, that we understand about. Yeah, okay. yeah, so that's what the whole okay. symbolism is from that. So, so it's saying that Anand ne prapt ho sakta jab tak dono ka milan ne ho aur uski vajit. So that's why he, Krishna Bhagwan is the joy of Devaki or joy of all of us or our Atma, you know. So. I think everybody understood yeah. this concept. Well, when you understand the Krishna as the consciousness itself. The yeah. angel, so the whole Bhagavad Gita the is about that, you yeah. know, that he always says so me, meaning he's not talking about, about me, me as a body, he's talking yeah. about me as a Brahman. Brahman. Whenever yes. he says me, it, you have to remember that. Yes. Otherwise, there'll be a lot of confusion. <coughs> yeah. yeah. So. Okay. So now we go. To our verse, yeah. We were at. We finished six. Yes. Where he was, he did. Uh, you remember what the context was? Uh, Duryodhana is all nervous, and a guilty man is always nervous. Talks too much. And first, he started talking about all the um, big Maharathis in Pandava's side. Kafi um, unke description diya sara or fear all of a sudden he realized oh my god i'm talking too much about them i need to talk about my, myself, myself. <laughs> so nervousness mein aadmi kuch kuch ulta seedha kaam karta hai wohi wo kar raha tha aur ye jab bhi bhi wo bol raha tha 